In this video, I will solve the Shonen equation of the helium atom using the self-consistent field method or the so-called SCF method. The Shonen equation in atomic units of the helium atom is H psi equals E psi. The Hamiltonian contains the kinetic energy operators of electron 1 and electron 2. The attraction in electron 1 fills, the attraction in electron 2 fills, and the electron electron repulsion. Uh, there is no analytical solution to this shown equation because this term, 1 over R12, cannot be separated. The two electrons correlate. But if somehow we can remove the electron electron repulsion, and then this simpler shown equation can be solved exactly by separating electron 1 from electron 2. We can then write out two one electron Schrodinger equations. The first Schrodinger equation for electron 1. The kinetic energy of electron 1, the attraction electron 1 feels, being applied to V1, that's the one electron wave function for electron 1, equals epsilon 1 V1. And epsilon 1 is simply the eigenvalue of this V1. And this epsilon 1 is also the energy of electron 1. Similarly, we can solve the 1 electron 1 Schrodinger equation for electron 2. And then we can actually combine electron 1 and electron 2 by multiplying this V1 and V2 together without considering quantum mechanical possibility 6. And V1 is simply e to the power of negative ZR1. V2 is e to the power of negative ZR2. And what is Z? Z is the nuclear charge. Well, which is 2. When postulate 6 is taken into account, the wave function must be anti-symmetric on the exchange of two electrons. Therefore, it's a little complicated. It's e to the power of negative ZR1 times e to the power of negative ZR2 times the spin function. The spin function is anti-symmetric on the exchange of two electrons. And Z is equal to 2, the nuclear charge. How about the energy? The energy of the two electron system is the sum of the ele uh, electron 1 energy and electron 2 energy. And the electron 1 has energy of negative z squared over 2. Same for electron 2. We sum it up. We get negative 4 atomic unit. This is inaccurate because, again, the electron electron repulsion was neglected. But this wave function and this energy are a initial guess of the wave functions and eigenvalues of each of the two electrons. Uh, by neglecting the electron electron repulsion. Also, this solution suggests that maybe we can find a way to break down the two electron Schrodinger equation into two one electron equations that are solvable and somehow including the electron electron repulsion. So let's write out the Schrodinger equation for electron one. Over here, the kinetic energy here, attraction here, repulsion here, and being applied to V1, we get uh, epsilon 1 times V1. And uh, also, we have a similar equation for V2. But here's the problem. Supposedly, they should be one electron equations, which contains the coordinates of only one electron, either electron 1 or electron 2. But this term, 1 over R12, contains the coordinates of both electrons. And again, the two electrons correlate with each other. This impossible to separate electron 1 from electron 2. Remember, this R12 is the square root of x1 minus x2 squared, plus y1 minus y2 squared, plus z1 minus z2 squared. There's no way to separate the coordinates of electron 1 from the coordinates of electron 2. No way. But there is a trick of solving these equations approximately. So first, we combine the attraction term and the repulsion term. The attraction plus the repulsion is the potential energy term. Sorry about this typo. Okay. Again, attraction plus repulsion is the potential energy. And 
we're not going to use the exact potential energy operator. So this is the exact energy, uh, potential energy operator for electron one. However, this exact potential energy operator contains coordinates of electron two. We don't like that. So what we will do is we will somehow use the effective potential energy of electron one, which is the exact attraction here plus the expectation function of the repulsion. So look, this is a repulsion. But this repulsion term contains the coordinates of electron two. How can we remove the coordinates of electron two? We use positive four. Okay, we can use positive four to get the expectation value of this electron electron repulsion given the total wave function. However, this time pay attention here. The volume element is not d tau 1, d tau 2. Neither is here. It's simply d tau 2, d tau 2. So this integral will remove only the coordinates of electron 2. And this e integral is still a function of electron 1. This is also a function of electron 1. After doing this division, we get a function of electron 1 as the effective repulsion electron 1 feels from electron 2. And similarly, we obtain the effective potential for electron 2, which is the sum of the exact attraction operator here plus the expectation of the repulsion electron 2 feels. And similarly, we use the integrals with respect to the coordinates of electron 1 to remove the coordinates of electron 1. Again, if you integrate a function of x, y with respect to x, you end up a function of y. And similarly, if you are integrating a function of electron 1 and electron 2 with respect to electron 1, you remove the coordinates of electron 1 in the final expression, you get a function of electron 2 only. All right, so, but then we do need to know what is psi 1, 2. We need our initial guess. Psi 1, 2 is simply e to the power of negative z r1 times negative z r2 times the spin function. What is z? z is simply 2 in our initial guess. How did we get the initial guess of this wave functions? We neglected the repulsion term. Uh, this spin function appears on top and bottom. Uh, they were the integral of uh, the squared modulus of the spin function will cancel. Same here, so we don't have to worry about this really. It's it's just this exponential function. And the initial guess of the wave function of electron 1 is e to the power of negative 2 r1, and that for electron 2 is e to the power of negative z r2. All right, again, just to emphasize, this guy contains electron 1, 2. This operator contains electron 1, 2. But this integral contains the coordinates of electron 1 only. And same for this coordinates. Similarly, this wave function contains both electrons. This operator contains both electrons, but the integral of this contains the electron 2 only. Because, again, we integrated this whole thing with respect to the coordinates of electron 1 to remove the coordinates of electron 1. All right, so if we do that, we obtain the effective potential energy operator for electron 1 and the potential energy operator for electron 2. These two are not exact potential energy operators, so that's why we put effective in the superscript. Those are effective potential energy operators for electron 1 and electron 2. And they contain only one electron. So this guy contains the coordinates of electron 1 this guy contains the coordinates of electron 2. So what's good about this? Now we have only one electron appearing in this Schrodinger equation for electron 1. And also we have only electron 2 in this Schrodinger equation for electron 2. So we can solve either analytically or at least numerically these two equations because each equation is a Schrodinger equation of only one electron. Again, we can solve one electron Schrodinger equation either exactly or extremely accurately. And then by solving these two equations, we'll be able to get a new set of phi1 and phi2. 
All right. Remember the initial gas of phi one is e to the power of negative two r one. The initial gas of this phi two is e to the power of negative two r two. But now, since this effective potential energy operator contains the repulsion, I believe this phi one and the phi two will be e to the power of maybe negative uh, uh, one point something times r one or r two. Okay. So we have new set of two wave functions for electron one and for electron two. And now the iterations begin. Since we have new set of phi one and phi two, now we can construct a new total wave function of these two electrons using a determinant again. We just plug in the new phi one and phi two into this determinant. So uh, in here. So this two exponential functions should be replaced by the new phi one and phi two, which contains the repulsion effect. Okay, and then once we have a new psi one two, we can plug in this new total wave function of the two electrons into these two equations to compute the new effective potential energy for electron one and the new effective potential energy for electron two. And once we have the new set of effective potential energy terms, we plug them back into this short equation. We solve for phi1 and phi2. Again, we'll get another set of phi1 and phi2. And then we keep this iterating steps. We get a new set of phi1, phi2, and then we get a new psi1, 2. And then we get new effective potential energy operators for electron one and electron two. And then we get the new V1 and V2 again. And then, and then the total wave function of the two electrons again. And then the two new effective potential energy operators. And then solve those two equations again. Until what? Until the effective potential reaches uh, consistency. Or if that's the case, the electric field uh, each electron field also reaches self-consistency. Therefore, this method is called self-consistent field method.